Most likely you've heard this, but if not, I'm telling you now. From the end or from the end or until the end of uh, March 2023, if you're a freelancer in the Czech Republic, and it doesn't really matter if your trade license, your Givno is active or if it's paused, you will be issued a data box and you will need to start communicating with the Czech government through the data box. And what the hell is the data box, so-called Datová schránka? Stick with me and I'll explain everything. So the first thing to explain is what actually is the data box or Datová schránka. So in the most or the simplest way to put it, it's an electronic way of communicating with the government. You basically go to a website, you log in to a special inbox, let's say, you have your own uh, login and password. And then when you send some message or some documents to the government, they know that it's coming from you because you've been verified, you've been issued these, uh, these details. So they know that the message or the documents are coming directly from you. Because if you, for example, send it only via email, if your email is johnsmith.something uh, at gmail.com, uh, you might not actually be John Smith. You might be someone else just pretending to be them. Uh, so the data box is like a verified identity of yourself. So when you com communicate with the government, they know it's you. And when they send something to you, they know that it has been delivered. It also kind of eliminates this problem that post office might not deliver something because it's delivered immediately and to your data box, which is verified box for you. So this is what it is technically. If you log into the website, uh, it's kind of, it looks similarly like an email. It just works uh, in a different way because you don't have any email addresses. You have uh, like, ID numbers, kind of, it's a combination of uh, letters uh, and numbers. So if you want to send uh, some message, for example, to the, to the Ministry of the Interior, let's say, then you don't send it to any email addresses, you know it, but you send it to this code like 127AB uh, capital S 13, something like that. But this number identifies exactly the authority you're sending it to, and you have the same or like similar number and it, it identifies you as a person. So that's what the data box is. Uh, what changes for people, or if you're a freelancer, what changes for you now is that until now, the data box was still there, it existed, but it wasn't mandatory to get it. You could get it, uh, but you didn't have to. Now you will have to. So basically the government, the Ministry of the Interior will set up the data boxes for all freelancers whose trade license exist. It means that either it's active, so you're using your trade license actively, or it's been paused. If you canceled it completely, it's deleted from the system, so that doesn't apply to you. But if it's just paused and it might be reactivated in the future, then it will still apply to you. So the, the government be, be, between now and the end of March this year, they will automatically set up a data box for you and they will send you the login details to either your physical mailing address, usually it will be the business address, uh, which is in your trade license, or if you have a personal data box, because you can have one data box as a, as a business, as a freelancer, uh, and one as a private person. So if you have the private one, they will send it there. If you don't, they will physically mail a letter to your business address. And basically since then you will need to start communicate with the, with the government or any official public offices through the data box. I mean, you will still have the, the option of sending the documents uh, via mail, like a paper form, or you can still go to their branches if you want, uh, but you should prefer the electronic way and if they want to send something to you, they will do it through the data box. The, the law says or the government say that they will send you everything through the data box. As of now, the same rule applies to companies. Like for example, in Move to Prague, we own a limited liability company. We operate as a limited liability company and we must have the data box. It's a must for companies and it's been for a couple of years already. So the government should also send everything to us uh, electronically through the data box, but they don't. <laughs> uh, 
uh, we still receive like half and half uh, messages to the data box and half and half to like the other half goes the standard way, the mail way. So we'll see how it's gonna work, but officially the government should be sending you everything to your mail, uh, to your data box. You can choose if you wanna do it the same way or if you still want to use the, the paper way or the physical visiting the office way. Uh, now, is it good or bad, the data box? <laughs> well, generally, I would say it's a great idea because everything obviously goes towards like electronic communication, uh, limiting the amount of time you have to spend at some offices, waiting in the lines, so it's great. And to be honest, Czech Republic is way behind any other country in this electronic communication. Still, until now, you cannot really do much of the things electronically, or you can, but it's kind of, <laughs> there are other problems with that. So this is, in theory, a great thing to do. Uh, in many cases, it might work well, I will explain, but for most of you, I believe the most important uh, authority you will be communicating with is the Ministry of the Interior. So if you're applying for a visa or residence permit, uh, whatever, uh, you will be communicating with the Ministry of the Interior. And that's where the problem lies, because uh, like, ideally it should work the way, or okay, let's, let's put it this way. If you want to, say, let's say that you applied for a visa or a residence permit, and then the Ministry tells you, hey, we haven't received the proof of accommodation from you, send it to us. So if you wanted to send it via uh, the data box. You would imagine that you just take the original proof of accommodation uh, signed by the landlord and everything, you scan it, you upload it to the data box and you can you can mail it or like send it, email it. It's not like you can data box it to the government and it will be fine. But unfortunately it's not how it works because you could still modify the PDF so the ministry will anyway not accept it as the original which is the whole point of it. So you don't have to do anything physically. You don't have to send them the physical paper. Uh, so you send it through the data box electronically, but they will not accept it as the original because you could have modified the PDF. So if you want to send some physical document to the government, let's say to the MOI, the proof of accommodation, then what you need to do is that you will take the physical document to a post office. At the post office, they will scan it, they will upload it to some special cloud. Then you come back home, you download it from the special cloud, and only uh, this downloaded file you can attach to the data box message, let's say, and send it to the government. So like the, the simplifying matters is that you don't have to send them the physical document, but you have to take the physical document to a post office, wait there, ask them to upload it to like an online storage, then go home, download it, and then send it electronically. So, <coughs> sorry, in my opinion, doesn't really look like a uh, simplification. The same way, for example, uh, if you, for example, apply for the proof of no debts, because for the business residence permit, you need to prove that you have no debts with the government. So you electronically apply for it through the data box, uh, let's say for the social security. Then the social security sends you a document to the data box. And then if you want to have like a physical document, uh, you cannot just print it because then you could have modified it. But So you will need to go to post office, uh, ask them to print it and put there a special kind of verification saying, okay, this is the original document printed from the data box. So it's still, for example, in this, regards it's still like not really simplification of things it's in a way even like more complicated so even though we have to send everything uh or we should send everything as a company to the ministry electronically we usually don't do it because it's more complicated than just to take the physical paper and mail it uh but for other things if you for example just want to submit your tax return to the tax office or your social security report to the, tax, uh, to the social security office, or if you just want to communicate uh, about something normal that you don't need it for your visa application and it, it's not like super official, for this, it might be actually a great thing because you can do it uh, from, the, from the comfort of your home. So I think it's a good step. 
hopefully I explained what it means for you, but it's still, still there is a long way to go to a system which will be working smoothly and like to benefit of both sides. But it's a great step. I'm happy that the government is doing this. Uh, if you have any questions about this, get in touch. Especially if you did your trade license or you're doing your visa through us, uh, then get in touch. We'll be happy to explain more. But now expect a letter coming to your physical address with the login details for your data box. As long as you're a freelancer in the Czech Republic, as long as you have the Givno, even though maybe post, you should receive a letter soon. So hopefully, guys, this was helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Uh, of course, join the channel if you want uh, to get uh, me replying to you in person in a video form. And see you next time. See you on Thursday, another live stream.